So Mayor Eric Adams from New York City has been indicted. The charges were unsealed today by a judge, and it's certainly not looking good for him. Uh, Here's an article from Just the News. That is John Solomon. And New York City Mayor Adams charged with wire fraud conspiracy and four other federal counts in unsealed indictment. Who would have thought that the mayor of New York City was corrupt? Hmm. He's screwed, man. Uh, And a lot of the people, this has been going on for weeks. Like, you know, obviously we're heading into one of the most important elections of our lifetime. But for the last few weeks, you would hear these little articles dropping here and there, talking about how all the people surrounding Eric Adams were being indicted or pleading guilty or under investigation, and they finally got the big guy. So New York City Democrat Mayor Eric Adams has been charged on five federal counts, including conspiracy to commit wire fraud, according to an indictment unsealed Thursday. The case appears to be connected to a roughly year-long investigation into accepting bribes and illegal campaign funds from foreign sources. Adams, of course, has denied the charges. The charges stem from contributions to Adams in 2021 mayoral campaign from, quote, wealthy foreign business people and at least one Turkish government official seeking to gain influence over him. This is our current our current state of our politics, folks. It's all about money. It's all about bribery. It's all about foreign influence and stuffing the pockets and the coffers of unelected officials and elected officials, people like Joe Biden, people like Joe Biden's kids, people like all of them. Like I said, and I've been saying this for a long time, if you were to investigate any one of those people in Washington, D.C., like they've investigated Donald Trump the last decade, a Washington, D.C. would be a ghost town because everybody would be in jail. So apparently Eric Adams pissed off the wrong people because this guy never would have been investigated if he wouldn't have went against the grain on something. Somebody wants him out of power, and this is how our politics works. It's all corrupt. It's all about money. It's all about greed and power. The whole damn, the whole damn system is corrupted. So the charges, okay, we went into that. So according to the indictment, the charges include federal program bribery, receiving campaign contributions by foreign nationals, one count of wire fraud, two counts of solicitation of a contribution by a foreign national, and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and one count of, of bribery. Certainly not good not good for Mayor Eric Adams there, man. Um, and of course, you know, he, he actually, I, you guys, I didn't even get to show you guys the article. So Mayor Eric Adams actually... Um, of course, Eric Adams is denying that all of it happened, and he's going to be fighting uh, for the truth, you know, the whole typical stuff. But, yeah, he's going to he's gonna go down. Um, there was something else, something else John Solomon unleashed today right here. This is actually pretty crazy and something I wanted to get into. So these transcripts, Trump urged use of troops to protect Capitol on January 6th, but was rebuffed. Isn't it crazy how we've, it's been four years since January 6th, almost four years, and we're just now starting to get to the bottom of who was actually responsible for that day, who was actually responsible for not securing the Capitol, all of this stuff. So here it is, the first two years, they used January 6th as a political stunt, as a political weapon against Donald Trump. And then just weeks before the election, we're starting to get answers about whose fault it really is. You got Nancy Pelosi on video from her daughter saying that she took responsibility for not having security there. And then you got stuff like this that just drops in this transcript from General Mark Milley. This stuff is crazy, man. I mean, better sooner than later. But I'm just saying, like, why did Democrats, why were Democrats able to use this as a political tool for so long? Why is it just now that Donald Trump is being vindicated? It's all because it's a sham, folks. They use the system against their political opponents they don't want to see in power. And that's exactly what they're doing to Donald Trump. And just like I said from the very beginning, January 6th was a false flag operation conducted by the United States government in order to interfere in a federal election. That's exactly what I've been saying for the last two years, and I know a lot of you probably feel the same. So then President Donald Trump gave clear instructions to Pentagon brass days before the January 6th riots to, quote, do whatever it takes to keep the U.S. Capitol safe, including deploying National Guard or active duty troops. But top officials do not comply because of political concerns, according to transcripts of a bombshell interview conducted by the, de- by the Defense Department's chief watchdog. 
So here we go. General Mark Milley, the former chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, confirmed to the Pentagon Inspector General three years ago that during a January 3rd, 2021 Oval Office meeting, Trump pre-approved the use of National Guard or active duty troops to keep peace in the nation's capital on the day of Congress was to certify the results of the 2020 election. Why are we just now hearing about this? Why are we just now getting transcripts from General Mark Milley saying that Donald Trump pre-approved the use of National Guard? Like, this is, this is something that we probably should have known two and a half years ago. But they've had two and a half years to accuse Donald Trump of being this insurrectionist, trying to remove him off of a presidential ballot. These people tried to remove a former president and current nominee off a ballot in several states because of this exact situation. Come to find out that he pre-approved the use of National Guard and General Mark Milley testified to it? And we're just now getting the transcripts. It's unbelievable, man. So Milley's interviews were among several key to transcripts obtained by House Administration Oversight Committee Chairman Barry Loudermilk. So check this out. This is what Donald Trump says, according to General Mark Milley in a transcript just released. It says, and this is Donald Trump's words right here, quote, the president just says, hey, look at this. It's going to be a large amount of protesters coming in here on the 6th and make sure that you have sufficient National Guard or soldiers to make sure it's safe, to make sure it's a safe event. Milley told the inspector general in one of the two interviews he did in spring 2021 during a probe of the Pentagon's response to January 6. Why are we just now hearing about this? Milley said then acting defense secretary Christopher Miller himself a former general assured Trump that there was adequate safety plan for Pentagon assistance to Washington, D.C. Quote, Miller responds by saying, hey, we've got a plan and we got it covered. And that's about it, Miller recalled. Did he have it covered? It didn't look like they had it covered to me. Quote, just make sure it's safe. Milley confirmed a second time during the interviews that Trump was clear in his wishes, saying, quote, it was just what I just described, which was, hey, I don't care if you use guard or soldiers, active duty soldiers, do whatever you have to do, just make sure it's safe, the general told the inspector general. The transcripts of Milley's April 8, 2021 and April 16, 2021 interviews confirm reporting by Just the News two years ago that Trump wanted troops to keep the capital city safe. But other transcripts gathered by Loudermilk during his subcommittee's ongoing probe of January 6 security failures show civilian leadership at the Pentagon admittedly opening that they would not comply with Trump's wishes, with some saying they did not like the optics of armed soldiers or guardsmen roaming the Capitol with weapons during what was supposed to be a peaceful transition of power. Quote, there was absolutely, there is absolutely no way I was putting U.S. military forces at the Capitol, period, Miller told the inspector general during his March 2021 interview. So it sounds like me, it should be Christopher Miller, that should be charged with insurrection and under investigation and indicted for the for what happened on January 6. But yet it's Donald Trump that's being indicted. It's Donald Trump being investigated. It's Do it's all Donald Trump's fault. When he told his protesters, when he told his supporters to march peacefully and patriotically. And this guy right here says, quote, there is absolutely no way I was putting U.S. military forces at the Capitol, period. <sighs> Even though Donald Trump said do whatever you have to do to keep the city safe. This is disgusting, man. So Miller said officials instead used an interagency process to devise an alternative plan that would put some D.C. National Guard troops on the ground in the nation's capital to direct traffic but not to guard the capital, a plan that District of Columbia Mayor Mario Bowser suggested. The operational plan was this. Let's take the D.C. National Guard, keep them away from the capital— Let's put the request, it wasn't my request, Bowser and her Metropolitan Police Department were like, let's put D.C. National Guard on traffic control points and at the metro stations to free up credentialed law enforcement officers that could go out and arrest people, Miller explained. Miller admitted there was a political calculus to his decision not to deploy troops near or at the Capitol ahead of time for preventative security. And he said this, quote, I hate to use the word optics because it's been used and so prejudicially and negatively. It wasn't the optics. It was like there was there would have been huge political consequences that because of what I got paid to do is I had the factor in the politics of this. And that was my concern. 
is the situation does not warrant at this time U.S. military forces, he explained. Former District of Columbia Metropolitan Police Chief Robert Conti, Conti confirmed in his interview that Pentagon officials, specifically Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy, resisted his department's initial request around the New Year's Eve of January 6, especially if they were to be deployed anywhere near the Capitol. Quote, I received a call directly from the Secretary of the Army, Ryan McCarthy, at, at that time. At that point, he had reviewed our request for the support of D.C. National Guard, and what he relayed to me, this phone call, was not what I initially thought that he would be saying. Conti recounted in his interview. He did not initially say, yes, you get the National Guard responding and they're going to handle this traffic and crowd management that you asked for. That they're, this is awful, awful. Like, I don't know how anybody can make sense of this, but reading it out loud is impossible. Quote, that was not what was stated. What was stated to me was that he was not inclined to fulfill the request with guardsmen simply because the optics of it was bad, Conti, said, Conti added. He said that he did not want to have boots on the ground anywhere near the Capitol. Loudermilk said he was deeply concerned that Pentagon officials substituted their own personal politics for the president's instructions. Quote, President Trump directed senior DOD leaders to ensure events on J6 be safe. They ignored his guidance, prioritized optics concerns over security, and pushed a flawed narrative in their IG report. The American people deserve the full truth. Eventually, the Pentagon approved less than 400 D.C. Guard troops to be used on traffic control, but documents gathered by Loudermilk's team show that D.C. Guard was told directly by McCarthy it could not use weapons or engage with protesters, a limitation that became magnified when violence broke out. Folks, this is insane. So it sounds like to me that everyone but Donald Trump is at fault for what happened on January 6th. It's insane. So you have D Donald Trump telling his supporters, the people that showed up on January 6th, to march to the Capitol peacefully and patriotically. But what we don't know is that three days before that, he had told everybody he was supposed to tell, make sure that the city is safe. I don't care if you got to use D.C. police. I don't care if you have to use troops. I don't care if you have to use National Guard. Keep the city safe. And this is what happens. So, in other words, January 6th happened not because of Donald Trump, but because of these people, because of the Pentagon officials. More notably, Christopher Miller, who didn't want troops there that day because he didn't, because of optics. That's what it was. I mean, what the hell, man? And what's worrisome to me is that Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi and, and all the other frauds, Adam Kissinger and Liz Cheney, they conducted this J6 committee on nothing but lies. It was a giant show trial to try and bend and twist the narrative. They, they used the J6 committee to create a narrative around January 6th. For what? For political purposes. To try and damage Donald Trump so that he wouldn't run for president. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope to God Donald Trump wins so that we can get to the bottom of what happened here. And it would be the biggest middle finger in the face of people like Nancy Pelosi, Adam Kissinger, and Liz Cheney, and all these other frauds that tried destroying this man's life off of a fake, phony narrative, just like they did with the Russia collusion hoax. I hope he wins and all these people pay the price. Nancy Pelosi included. It is disgusting what they have done to Donald Trump. It is un-American, and it is... What Nancy Pelosi and Liz Cheney and Adam Kissinger did on the J6 committee was taking a sledgehammer to democracy by trying to delegitimize and, and mischaracterize what of January 6th, creating this false fake narrative around January 6th, when in actuality, it was their fault. It was Nancy Pelosi's fault. It was this guy Christopher Miller's fault. It was Mark Milley's fault. It was all these people's faults for not having the proper security there that day. That's what pisses me off. So not only do you have corrupt mayors like Eric Adams being indicted for bribery, corruption, all the stuff that we know happens in Washington, D.C., but now you have people like Nancy Pelosi, Christopher Miller. You have these documents coming out that the January 6th narrative was completely false. And the only reason why January 6th took place the way that it did was because these people failed to take orders from the commander in chief, Donald Trump at the time, to keep the city safe because they were afraid it may look bad. So if anybody's at fault for January 6th, it's these people.